Hello, and welcome to a three-part series on getting started with container service on Alibaba Cloud. A container is a new kind of OS-specific virtual machine, or VM, that contains only the files which differ from the base operating system. Because of this, a container is much smaller than a VM and starts up very quickly. The most well-known container management environment is called Docker. The Alibaba Cloud Container Service fully supports Docker-compatible containers. There are five specific stages you need to complete, and in the right order, to set up your first container. You only have to do this preparation once. After that, a container can be deployed in just a few minutes. In this video, we'll cover stages 1 and 2, activating the Virtual Private Cloud VPC, and container service in your account, and creating a VPC. First, we need to activate the VPC service. This is a network in the cloud, complete with servers and switches. Sign into your Alibaba Cloud account, head to the console, and click on Virtual Private Cloud. You'll be asked to activate the VPC service, so click the Activate button. Review the service terms and, if you're happy with them, click on Activate Now. This will activate the VPC service on your account. You'll find yourself back at the console, where you can see all of your VPCs in the chosen region. There may be none, or there may be a system default one. But ignore these for now and return to the console homepage by clicking on Home. Next, we activate the container service. Under Elastic Computing, click on Container Service. You'll be asked again to accept the service terms. Read them, then tick the box to accept them and click Activate Now. After a few moments, the service will be activated. That is the first stage completed. The VPC and container service are activated. Now that we've activated the service, we can create a VPC. Back at the console, click on Virtual Private Cloud. Select the VPC tab on the left-hand side of the screen. The top of the screen shows the list of regions in which you can create your VPC. Your choice of region is important, so give this some consideration before making a final decision. Make a note of the region and zone you choose, because you'll need to choose the same later. Choose your region. For example, we'll choose Hong Kong. And click the Create VPC button. Give your VPC a name and a description. You'll also need to choose an IP address range. We'll use the 192.168 range for this video. Click on Create VPC. Then, click on Next Step. Our VPC needs at least one virtual switch, or vSwitch, so we will create one. Give your vSwitch a name and choose a zone. Remember to use the same zone you chose earlier. We chose Hong Kong earlier, and now we'll specifically choose Zone B. Next, you'll be asked to allocate an IP address to your switch in the range you chose earlier. For this example, we'll use 192.168.10.0 forward slash 24, which allows it to control up to 252 virtual devices. Then click on Create vSwitch you should see a message that your VPC has been successfully created. Click on the Done button within the message box, and you should now see your VPC listed. That's the second stage complete. Move on to Part 2 to learn how to create an ECS instance and a cluster. In Part 2, we'll cover Stages 3 and 4 how to create an Elastic Compute Service, or ECS, instance, and then a cluster. First, we'll create an ECS instance, i.e., a virtual server, within our VPC. On the main console screen under Elastic Computing, click on the Elastic Compute Service. Under Instances, click on Create Instance. Remember to choose the same region and zone as before. Scroll down and choose an instance type. For this example, we'll choose a tiny instance, one vCPU core, and one gigabyte of RAM. Now, we need to choose a network type. You will probably find that the only type available to you is VPC. Then, choose your VPC and vSwitch that we created earlier. Next, choose a security group. A security group is a collection of firewall rules that allows you to control access to your ECS instance. 
For now, we'll just choose the default Security Group 2 customized port option. Tick the boxes to enable access to ports 80 and 443. We'll be creating a web server container later, and it will need these ports open. Now scroll down the screen in order to choose your server's operating system and disk size. For this video, we'll use Ubuntu and a 40 GB drive. Scroll down the screen again and choose a security setting. For the sake of simplicity, in this example, we will choose Password for now. Scroll down the screen again to choose the duration of your ECS instance and to assign it a name. Now, click the Buy Now button and check that all is correct. To finish, click on Place Order and then click on the Pay button on the screen that follows. We now have an ECS instance. Click on the Console button. The next stage that we need to complete before using the container service is to create a cluster. From the main console screen, click on Container Service. Then, click on the Create Cluster button. Give your cluster a name. Remember to choose the same region and zone that you chose earlier. Underneath the Network Type setting, select the VPC and vSwitch that you created earlier. Scroll down to the Add Node section and click on the Add Existing Instance link. The left-hand pane shows the existing instances. Click on the one created earlier and then click the right arrow to add it to the right-hand pane, which shows our list of instances in your cluster. Click on Next Step and choose a password when asked. Then click on Done. You'll see a reminder that port 22 needs to be enabled in the security group. Click Confirm. For now, we don't need Server Load Balancer, so we'll untick this option and confirm. Return to the top of the screen and click on Create Cluster. Then click on the OK button. Our cluster will now be created. It takes a few minutes. You may be asked to activate the Resource Access Management RAM service at this point. If so, accept the service terms and click the Activate Now button and you'll find yourself at the RAM Overview panel. There's nothing you need to do here, so click Home to return to the console. Click on Container Service. The screen will probably look like this. This means your cluster has not yet been created, so we just need to wait a little bit. After a few minutes, just refresh the page, and the screen should now show that the cluster is up and running. Go back to the console. Move on to part three to see how to create containers and deploy a containerized web server. Welcome to the final part of this video series, where we'll show you how to create containers and deploy a containerized web server. From the main Alibaba Cloud console screen, under Elastic Computing, select Container Service. Then, from the menu on the left-hand side, select Images and Templates, and then select Docker Images. The standard test for a container system is to deploy the Docker Hello World container, so that's what we'll do first. Click on the Official tab at the top of the screen. Look down the list of available Docker images until you find Hello World. You may need to look on subsequent pages to get to it. When you do find it, click on the Create Application button, which takes us to this screen. Choose a name for your container, leave the version setting as it is, select your correct cluster, and leave the update setting at standard release. Add a description if you wish. Click on Pull Docker Image. This will ensure that you definitely end up with the latest version rather than anything that may be cached in your cluster. Then click Next. The settings on this configuration screen can be left at their default. Just click on the orange Create button. Your container will now load and run. Click on View Applications List. Click on the name of your container. Then click on the Logs tab, and in the output, you can see the messages from the Hello World container that's been running. Next, we will deploy a Docker container that includes a full Nginx web server. From the console, under Container Service, click on Applications. Then, click on the Create Application button. Give this application a name, add a description if you wish, leave the version, cluster, and update as they are, and click Pull Docker Image. Then, click on Create with Image. Click on the Select Image link. From the Popular tab, choose Engine X. Then click OK. 
In the Network section of the page, under Web Routing, click the blue plus symbol. For the container port, type 80. For the domain, which is your URL, type in what you'd like it to be called. We're using NGX. Now, click Create on the right-hand side of the screen. Click on View Applications List. Under Applications, you should see your new container listed. Click on the name of this container, NGX, in the example here. In the Services tab, click on the name of the container again. You'll now see various pieces of information about your container, including its access endpoint. That's the address or URL of your container holding the Nginx web server. Click on the Access Endpoint. You'll see the Nginx homepage. We now have a working web server running as a container in our new cluster that only took a couple of minutes to create. Thank you for watching. Log into your account and head to the main console to get started now with Container Service on Alibaba Cloud.